Self-analyzation is so important in this mission that we're about to be on. You got to know how to count the costs and what you're doing. Because in this walk with Christ, it's not gonna always be a bed of roses. You're gonna have some ups and you're gonna have some downs. So your ability to know how to count the cost before you begin will save you a lot of heartache. You must know what you are getting into. You must know what you are facing. You must know what God has for you. And you must know that there will be some rough times. But if you can bear through, this will be your position of power. This will be the place where you excel. This will be make you an elite and a chosen one. Always remember, count the cost. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. On today's edition of the Daily Dose, we're going to take a little walk through the book of Luke and we're going to discuss counting the costs. We're going to discuss the process that you may go through when you are an individual of excellence. I'm talking about a, an elite individual. I'm talking about someone who has been called to higher levels and you have been putting in the work to reach these higher levels. Now, in this walk, when I say count the cost, I'm going to show you from the scriptures that you must sit back and analyze yourself and see how far do I really want to go in this walk what do i really want to do because the deeper that you go the more extreme the measures get the deeper that you go in this walk with christ is the more the enemy is going to target you because you become an elite individual of greatness you have people in the church that are casual christians and they become casualties because they are on the up and down and don't know which way they are going one minute they are all for god and the next minute they are allowing the things of the world to bring them under so these casual christians become casualties then you have the maintainable christian this is the christian right here that tends to just maintain their place they're not moving up they're not moving down but they're not experiencing the fruitfulness of the heavenly existence they are not experiencing the supernatural life they are just abiding their time to get to heaven but then you have your elite christians i call them citizens of the kingdom because these are the ones that begin to take it by force these are the ones that their mind is forever stayed on guard throughout the day it doesn't matter what they're doing that their mind is always on the lord this elite section right here are the ones who are most targeted by the enemy because they are the ones who are scheduled to do the most these are the ones that move from the place of being called into the place of being chosen these are the ones who were foreordained and preordained to the glory of the position that god has placed in them when you become a prophet unto the lord and god begins to show you things that he's not showing other people not saying that he does not desire to show everybody but see you have to know how to dig in and grab what god got for you but you got to count the cost because along the way you may lose some things everybody's not going to understand you because of where you are when you grow into a place of intimacy with the lord and you truly become the bride of christ and you are joined unto him sometimes god seems like he will wreck everything in your life because why your time and your attention is so valuable unto him and he does not want to lose that because there are not many in the world that will seek God unto the level of eliteness. There is a very small percentage of citizens of this kingdom that will seek God with everything in them 24 seven. These are the ones who are able to pray without ceasing. When I say count the cost, there are different levels 
to God. There are different levels you can attain. And with each level, it is true what they say, the higher the level, the bigger the devil. When the enemy begin to place upon you the elite of his strategy, you know that you have gained access. When the enemy tries to tear up everything that you have and try to turn away everybody in your life against you, you know you have gained access. When the enemy will choose the weaker ones and begin to pull on them, begin to play with their mind and turn them against you, you know you have gained access. The scripture says in Psalm 16 11, thou will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In the presence of the Lord is where you gain joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Before I go into kind of the cause, I want you to see something that when you get into the Lord's presence, it's where you gain joy. But it is at his right hand where there is pleasures forevermore. Now, the right hand, when they say Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father forever making intercession according to the, the needs of the children. They are not saying that there are two thrones. He is seated at the right hand of authority. Let me show you something. Whenever you raise your right hand unto God, you are placing yourself in a position of authority. You are placing yourself in a place where you are operating according to the authority of God. When you raise both hands unto the Lord, this is a position of worship. When you pray and you worship like this here, this is a position to receive. These are several areas. You got to know what position you are in for what you need from God. Because the, the word of God is consistent of formulas. So when Jesus was sitting at the right hand of the Father, he is at that place, that position of authority. Now, many in the church, in the kingdom, they possess power. All power has been given unto him, which is in heaven and earth. And he delegated that power. Anybody at any time can operate in the power of the Lord. But it's the authority that makes demons tremble. And you do not receive authority when not first counting the cost and getting into a place of intimate relationship with the Father. I'm talking about that place that Song of Solomon talked about. That place of the bride. That place of closeness. I'm talking about that place where it's just you and him. I'm talking about that quiet time of intimacy. That place where secrets are revealed. That place where destinies are impacted. That place where power is activated. But you got to count the cost. Let's go to Luke chapter 14. Just take your time with me today because this will be very, very meaningful unto your life to understand why some things go on in your life. Luke 14, verse 26. He says, if any man come to me, this is Jesus speaking, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, this word hate does not mean where your natural mind is going at right now. This word hate comes from the, the Greek word misio, which means to love less. In other words, you will have things in perspective. He said, if any man come to me and hate not his father, mother, wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, even his own life, you cannot be my disciple. And whosoever do not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You have to love certain things less in the world that comes against the word of God. It doesn't matter who the individual may come through. You have to love that less that way it do not come a part of your mission and you do not forfeit the destiny that God has placed upon your life. But along that there, there's a cross to bear. And you got to come after him or you cannot be a disciple. 
For which of you intending to build a tower, sit it not down first and count it the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. You got to sit down and count the cost. Can I complete this mission? I know once you get two goosebumps and a chill, everybody think that they are called to be a pastor, a bishop, an apostle. But did you count the cost? Did you go on the backside of Arabia? Everybody I see in the scriptures, when they got called by God, there was a period of time where they were on the backside of the mountain. They were out of the public eye. They were like Jesus was in the, in the desert 40 days. He was led of the spirit into that place to be tempted of the devil. But he came out in the power of the spirit and fame about him went abroad. It wasn't until he was set away. But every time someone gets two goosebumps and a chill, they ready to preach. And here come the scandals. Here come the things coming against them. Because why? You were not ready. Yes, you had a calling, but you had not been chosen yet. Yes, you were called to this here, but you had not been trained yet. So when you are called, you must first be trained and then you are chosen for a destiny and for a position at hand. But we want to jump in the pulpit so fast and don't allow the potter to make of us a good clay. We don't allow the potter to train us. We don't allow the potter to mold us this is your position of power Jesus at the age of 12 years old was in the temple listening to the religious leaders and teaching but he did not begin ministry for another 18 years Paul was knocked off his horse taught by Gamaliel a leader of the leader Pharisee of the Pharisees of, of the eight tribe of Benjamin one of your smartest scholars in the scriptures but he left and went away for three years in Arabia, Mount Sinai, and was molded and he was groomed. That's why he was so powerful. You see, sometimes you may see an individual's glory, but you don't know their story. You may see where an individual was famous and known about him, but you don't understand what he went through to get to that place. You don't understand what he lost to get to that place. You don't understand what the individual may have succumbed to in order to receive that level of an anointing and a level of God's power moving in the individual's life. He said, let's happily after he have laid the foundation. Half he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. All that behold it begin to mock him. This is when they begin to talk about you. They begin to ridicule you. Because why? You jumped in the race too fast. I'm not talking about some mistakes you may have made. Because a mistake does not disqualify you. A mistake turns into experience and it grooms you for the next level. So your mistakes or your shortcomings does not disqualify you from your position of authority. In actuality, as you heard in my last message, The Created Evil... Some of these mistakes were brought on by the Lord to be used as sandpaper to rub off the rough edges. He said, for which of you intended to build a tower, sit it not down first and count it the cost whether he has sufficient to finish it. Let's happily, after he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Because people are watching. The scripture says, a man's foe will be of his own household. People are watching. The hardest ones to win going to be the ones closest to you. People are watching. You see, sometimes people may take something you do or a mistake you do and they want to disqualify you. When God has not disqualified you. They want to disqualify you when God has elevated you. They want to disqualify you when God has enhanced you. But see, God is taking these things and molding you. He says, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. It's all about completing the work. So allow God to train you. Allow God to mold you. Don't be shy in the position you're in because it will change. Don't be shy in the position you're in because God will elevate you. The scripture says that a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. Your time is coming. 
All who didn't believe in you, I'm telling you today, your time is coming. All that didn't trust in your word, your time is coming. All that didn't support you, your time is coming. It's going to be a time when they're going to do like they did Jesus and look back and say, surely this was the son of God. But it was not till after he had went to the cross where they looked back and said, this was the son of God. All the miracles he had shown them, every walk of life he had took them through, all the ideas, all the parables, everything, he, all the blind eyes opening, all the paralytic walking, it took death and him losing everything for them to say, surely this was the son of God. But by that time, it was too late. It was too late. The scripture says, if the enemy had known what they would do, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. If they would not, if he would have known the result that would come from, they would plant a seed, they would never have crucified him. Hmm. He say, or oh, what king going to make war against another king? Sit it not down first and consult it whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else while the others yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desired condition of speech. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaken not all that he have, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Or seasoned. It is neither fit for the lamb nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that have ears to hear, let him hear. When you sit down and you count the cost, and you know what it is that you're getting into, there is a certain grace that comes upon you because you accept the mission knowing what may come about. It's like an individual joining the military. He knows that one day it may be war. He knows that one day I could be put on the front line and I could not come back. But he accepts that position going into the military knowing what the fate could be. So when you count the cost, you know, and you go into the position knowing I may lose some things. You go into the position knowing that I may not understand some things. You go into the position knowing that some people are going to turn their back on me. Some people are not going to see what I see. But people ain't putting the work that you putting in. So therefore, they're not going to see what you see. You can tell them all you want, but they're not going to see it unless they taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Unless they take it serious and understand the position that you are in. What I'm saying today is you got to count the cost. Sit down and analyze. The scripture says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery fire which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened. He said, don't think it strange. He said, in this world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome this world. Why is he putting all these things in there? Why is he saying when the enemy come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him if the enemy not going to come in like a flood? Why would he say no weapon formed against me shall prosper if a weapon was not going to be formed? Why would he need to be your strong tower if you are not in weak areas sometimes? Why does he have to be your refuge or your beacon of light if your way is not dark sometimes? Why? Because if you begin to look into the scriptures and look deep into the scriptures, you will begin to see your process in the scriptures. You will understand some of the things that you go through. You will understand the place that you are in. You will also see where you are going. Hold on. Press in. Hold on. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to see. I admonish you today. I exalt you in the name of the Lord today. I pray that you would minimize your life a little. That you would set time aside to seek ye the face of the Lord. 
Set time aside to just be quiet with him. Set time aside that you may know him. Set time aside that you may understand him. Because you got to count the cost. If you don't count the cost, you will find yourself building and building and building and get to a place where you're not building anymore. You lack the strength to press on. You'll find yourself in a position why I'm not graining no more. Why I'm not seeing anything happen anymore. Because you didn't count the cost and life took over. Life took over. Life took over. There's some things that you just can't change. Some things you can't alter. The father of the prodigal son. He gave him his inheritance. He let him go. But he waited until that son came to himself. He came to himself and said, the hired hands at my father's house is even better than me. I will go back and ask to just be a hired hand. But he came to himself and realized that the picture that the enemy had painted him was a mirage. See, the enemy is giving people hallucinations. Spiritual hallucinations, spiritual mirages. He paints you a good picture. And once he gets you in there, and once you have lost everything, then he clears it up and show you what really is going on. Count the cost. That's my prayer for you today. Count the cost when you take up that cross. Count the cost when you call upon that name. Count the cost and walk into a place of authority. A police officer is nothing but a mere man when he walks in his street clothes. But when he put that badge on and that gun, everybody respect him. Not because of the gun and the badge, but because of the authority it holds. Because he has authority now. He operates on the behalf of someone else. He has the government backing him. The police force backing him. So when you walk in authority with the Lord, you got to know that you got the Almighty backing you. You got to know that the, the one that sits high is backing you. When you count the cost and you make that decision to follow him no matter what, you got the authority of the Lord enacted upon your life now. You got the miraculous power upon your life now. You got the spirit inside of you that will begin to operate in a deeper realm because why? You have counted the cost and you have chosen the kingdom. You have chosen the king. You have chosen the master. Time is coming to an end. There's no more time for playing. There's going to be a great harvest. Two. The enemy is pulling in a great harvest. And the Lord is pulling in a great harvest. This is the time to count the cost. This is the time to really sit down and take up your cross and follow him. This is the time to say, for Lord, for thou I live, for thou I die. Now I can understand why Paul was able to say, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. And gave himself for me. You got to count the cost. Time is coming to an end, people. We're about to see the prophetic utterance, a prophetic move come to this country like you've never seen before. You're about to see some blind eyes open. You're about to see some, some lame walking. You're about to see some miracle signs and wonders. But you're also not realizing because you're not studying to see that it will also be an antichrist who will do some lying wonders and going to pull some people in. Some false crises, some false prophets. You got to count the cost. You got to get this thing part of you, man. You got to get this thing so deep in you, bro, to where it begin to ooze out of your spore, out of your pores, man. Count the cost, man. Man, time, man, the playtime is over. Playtime is over, man. I'm telling you, it's coming to an end. I'm not somebody that would normally even be this type of person, man. I come, I, I'm an OG out of the game. But when God pulled me out, I counted the cost, man. 
I knew I'd lose some things, man. I knew I'd lose a lot. But I counted the cost. I choose him. You got to choose him. You got to count the cost. Count the cost for your kids. Count the cost for your family. Everybody ain't gonna follow you, man. Everybody ain't gonna support you. You got to count the cost. Because in this day and age, God needs some soldiers, man. He needs some soldiers, man. In that game, we were soldiers in that game, man. You'll take a life, you'll jack something, rob something, mess over somebody, it didn't even matter. So why are we gonna come to the kingdom and become soft? Why are we gonna come to the kingdom and become like 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 like, like we just live a little cushion now? The scripture said the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Count the cost. Are you ready for this here? Are you ready for what's about to happen? What's about to go on? Count the cost. Did all this here in the game, all this in the world, this bad man, bad, this bad, that there. Oh, you kingpin this here. You had all the women. You did all this here. But then you come to God, you become soft. Every little window doctrine, every little thing just pushes you over now. Count the cost. You're going to be OG there? Be OG here too. I pray that this word reaches you in a special place. I pray that, 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 that your understanding be opened. That your eyes be opened. Matter of fact, I don't just pray it. I declare it. I demand it in the spiritual realm. That your eyes will be open to see. What's going on. I pray that you be strengthened by might by his spirit in your inner man. That this word will become a part of you. And that you would count the cost and make the right decision. Joshua said, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. He said, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. He separated them. You got to go here, you got to go there. According to the mission, because he counted the cost. Make a decision. Make a decision. Make a decision. This is George Dominic, Husband for Christ Ministry, once again with today's episode of The Daily Dose. Remember, behold, former things have come to pass and new things do I declare. And before they spring forth, I'm telling you of it.